Welcome back, everyone. As I've mentioned before, Steve and I spent an entire two glorious weeks at our off-grid cabin. It was the longest stretch of days we've ever stayed out there in a row, and it was honestly such a great time that we're going to try and do it again next year. It really felt like I was able to settle in and make the cabin feel like home, you know? Of course, the loss of Scout put a huge damper on things, but we just had to push through and get things done. Both Steve and I love being busy with projects and this was a perfect time to work on some for that property. While my biggest project was working on my shed at the top of the property, I also wanted to work on some other ones down below at the cabin and of course, Steve had a list all of his own. In this video, we've got not one project folks, not two, not even three, actually, yeah, I don't know, there's a bunch. We've got a bunch of projects and the odd project, and I wanted to share some of them with you, so I thought I would compile them all up into one video. So, sit back, grab something to drink, maybe a little snackaroo, and enjoy. It's impossible for me to film everything that goes on. So while I've been up working on my shed, Steve has been building a mountain bike trail. And it's gonna come along there and then continues up here. This is just the rough, initial rough outline. However, that track has come off. I guess the machines, like with the rubber tracks, if they um, hit a, a rock in a certain way, the track comes off, so it's what happened. So Steve is just gonna take the grease out and get the track back on. What do you think of the machine, Steve? Really good. Got to get the track up in the air. A wrench. This little excavator came with a whole bunch of specific tools for it, and a little, like a whole little toolbox. But we didn't bring that with us. Probably should have. So, see if this will work. See if we can get this. Better. Okay, yeah, this has to come out. Look it's at, a, yeah, look at how loose it is I now. I know, I know. So, that's okay. So, I think. <laughs> it's like pooping. So we've come to this flat area. The property line is just kind of in that next bunch of trees there, sort of where Riley is. But anyway, it's kind of a cool little flat area and we're gonna like do a little loop-de-loop -loop around in here with some stunts. There's some rocks in here. We're gonna move around, maybe build a bridge with a little jump, some fun things.
is, it's such a tight space. This front entry, there's not really a whole lot of space. And this just fits enough that the door can open still. Normally we put the shoes flat, so but this is perfect because the door can still open now. And I purposefully left this open so that stuff falls out um, onto the floor and I can just vacuum it like dirt from the shoes. And yeah, I've been wanting to do something like that for a while here. For some reason we have a lot of shoes. Round. Project build ramp. So I hiked all the way up here to film Steve building it and then he just built it without me getting here. So a little on the slow side. Just use old railway ties, I guess, which was the plan. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. What's for supper anyway tonight? That stew, and I'll sprinkle a little bit of cyanide on it, too. <laughs> yeah, you didn't space them the way I spaced them when I, I built this at home. And then, anyway, Steve doesn't care about that stuff. I get things done. <laughs> and that board is upside down. All this wood, by the way, was all from the roof stuff. What would that be called? Yeah, leftover from the, the crates or whatever that the panels of roofing came on. So it's two by six. Can we flip that board around? It's the only board that's not blackened on that side. There. Those are remarkably um, in good condition, hey? Yeah, they are. That's crazy. Pretty good. Look what we got. Ready to go down. I'll put this stick here. So cold and so good. <laughs> Warm up a second as your body starts to like rah, with blood, you know? Then you go in again, and it's not as bad. One, two, three, four. Off-grid laundry. Hey guys, 
I thought I would show you, I'm gonna do a couple of loads of laundry at our cabin and I thought I would show you how we do it. I bought this little higher apartment washing machine a few years ago. I had this obsession about doing laundry off-grid and I went from you know doing it by hand or doing it in like all different sorts of off-grid systems that I had looked up online and I finally just thought to get a little washing machine because in my delusional mind I thought that I would be spending more than two days at a time out here and you know the reality is if we spend one night that's kind of typical one to two nights we spend out here if we stay three nights sometimes four nights is a really long time for us to be out here but this stint is two weeks and so we've We'll have been out here for two weeks. We're a week and a half in right now. And there's always, hang on, I gotta get this. <laughs> okay, I'll just get the laundry started and then I'll come up and see ya, over. Yeah, so there's always, lawn, like I always have to take laundry home no matter what anyway. Bedding, all that kind of like heavier stuff. This is just a tiny little washing machine. But sometimes it's nice to be able to just catch up on things like dishcloths, cushion covers, pillowcase covers, socks, laundry, tank tops, a few things, hand towels, some things that just get dirty quickly with the amount of use that, that they see. So sometimes I like to just do that. And today is a sunny day, so it's perfect that I can lay things out to dry in the sun. First thing is first, actually. So what I do is to have to take the screen out. Dogs. So the water hookup is just out the window here. So I do take the screen off to get the hoses in and out. Hook it up here. So that's the water in. This is the water out line. So as it drains and it spews out the water, I was like sticking it in the shower because I wasn't sure if it could pump up higher. It says not to have it higher than the washing machine, but it seems to do just fine. And then I just close that. And we also have a little bit of extra hose. So we'll go outside now. Oh, here's the, the plug-in too. I plug it into the generator. There is our main water line that comes from the black tank, the gravity feed. It's just one inch black hose that comes all the way. It runs through the outhouse. So we have like a sink in the outhouse. And then it comes here and goes up into the house. And then we just added a T onto that hose to give us this. So just screw this onto here. And then I just extend the water outline. You know, if I stuck this hose into this, into the shower, it would just go down the shower drain. The reason why I stopped doing that is because it does spray a lot and then I have to wash the shower after all the time. Uh, you know, so I usually just do this. Stick it out here. Put a rock on the end of the hose to keep it down. Water is on. Using that generator, this one needs some work. Just try and use the little one because it's more quiet. But it says oil alert, so maybe it needs a bit of oil. So I'll have to do a little bit of maintenance when I'm done. Because it obviously only uses cold water, I heated up the kettle. Turn it on. Start. And then I just pour in water that I heated up on the kettle. And I'm gonna do the socks, <laughs> my stuff first, socks and underwear, tank top, bras. One more sock. Close her up. So where are you going to go? That route. 
through there. Um, there I, I marked it with red paint. Okay. Ooh, the light broke. Damn. Okay, well, I just came up to see. Look and sniff the air. Yeah, good. I'm doing laundry. Good, well. <laughs> Very fascinating. So these docks washed up on our beach some years ago, maybe five years ago, four or five years ago. More than likely someone was rebuilding their docks and then they just sent these down the lake and they came to our property and they've been here ever since. Steve wanted to like throw them down the lake just like someone else probably did, but I luckily they have stayed here. The water comes up and then goes down each year, but they haven't floated away yet so I have been thinking of so many different ways over the few years that they've been here of ways that I can repurpose them so I'm finally kind of getting some ideas this one here is pressure treated boards and then this one here I thought was pressure treated boards too but I'm pretty sure it's actually just cedar anyway the pressure treated stuff I am going to use in a couple different things and one of them is I'm going to make a little dog house. Like that's a good one. A little bit bent, but self-tapping. Coated screw. Score! this piece of OSB that we had underneath the cabin as well as this little off cut of roof roofing material so I'm trying to make it the size that will accommodate this one panel I just kind of have to trim it enough so that if I have a slope a bit of a slope I'll have to have a bit of a slope on it not too much I kind of like a steeper slope but in this case we'll just have to have it kind of like that give myself enough of an overhang these boards are like one inch thick so it's not going to be as big as I think it should be for like Clyde say but he can still fit in it well enough I'm sure for a short time I'm going to use these four screws that I saved from the dock down there.
It's almost time to go for a dip in the lake anyway, but. I was gonna do bird's mouths and set them on top like this, but I just don't have the tools here to do that. I sort of tried and I just don't, I only have, yeah, I just don't have the right tools. So I'm gonna do this instead and then just um, put them inside. I finally had to go find Steve's drill that he had here. The other one was just a struggle. Oh. <laughs> oh, but look at all the stuff she's made. <laughs> Broken stuff and things that don't work. They'll say, geez, look at this cool doghouse she made. Uh, it's like an old there. trapper's cabin. Yeah. What are you going to do with all this stuff? Really? Is that right, Steve? I'm gonna put pre drill. Is this one split? just barely, barely, barely covers. Oh. Ah, not so good. Let me see what I got. So I found two pieces of tin. This is probably what I'm just going to do because that, man, I based that whole thing around that piece of tin. These are like silver, just galvanized plain. This one was the kind of the colored one left over from the roof here. So obviously I, I would prefer this one, but I prefer the look of having some overhang. So I'm gonna go with this. The only thing is, is that um, I need to add, for this. these ones are a little bit more flexible. So I'm gonna add some supports. Anyway, here it is. I really like it. It's super, I think, adorable. And I do think that it looks like a, like an old trapper's cabin, which was the look I was going for. The doghouse that I put very little effort into and didn't 
didn't sort of think anyone would use is being used way more than the doghouse that I built at home. That's like super posh and nice, but maybe dogs just like something simple and small. Hey, Riley. Clyde wants to go in there all the time. Riley's in here. <gasps> Cute. Yay, new batteries. <sighs> Can you, uh, where's that plastic bag? Where are these things? Oh, battery protector. Can you open, oh, what are these? Christmas ornaments. Washes seal out protecting terminals from corrosion. Hey, Hannah. So, I'm going to have to do this quick. One of the other things that we did out here, um, or that Steve did, I should say, while we were out here was hooked up um, this battery charger. I will show you. It's just kind of tucked away in there. But so... Long story short, Steve also changed the batteries while we were out here. So we had three batteries before, I think it was 300 amp hours. And at one point they had gotten overcharged by the wind generator. So they didn't hold their charge anymore. And we quickly realized that if we were gonna be out here for two weeks, there's no way the fridge would survive, the food wouldn't survive. So Steve went back and got four new batteries. So we have 400 amp hours of new batteries put in and so we had got this battery charger when we had the old batteries and they weren't functioning that great. Still, Steve installed this thing anyway, so that basically, you know, there are days here when there is no sun and there's no wind. So we don't have any way to charge the, the batteries. In the off season too, especially like in the winter here, there isn't a lot of sun. So it would be a way to charge the batteries. I didn't get any filming done of the actual setup of it because I was building the doghouse and he did this. Well, I didn't know that. But the gist of it is that this cable he has hooked out, this uh, extension cord he got is hooked outside to the generator which he's tucked underneath the cabin. And we basically just plug this in, hook up positive to negative on one of the batteries and start the generator and the batteries will get charged that way. So that's just kind of an extra little feature that um, that we have to support our batteries that we did out here. We, Steve. Okay, so this is a fun one. My dad, gave Steve and I this boat as like, I don't know, like a, it wasn't really a wedding gift, but he gave it to us in the year we got married, made a little plaque, you know, to put on the boat for us. And basically more or less just because we have this lake property and my dad had this boat that he's had for many years and no longer uses it or barely used it anyway. So it's like an eight foot fishing boat, fiberglass fishing boat, sea flea made in the Okanagan in, in British Columbia. But um, it's probably the most useless boat there is. It's so unstable, you can't use it as a boat. It, like, you just tip. It's just, yeah, it's just a poor design, I think. So it's been sitting around on the shore forever. And we've always been trying to think of different ways that we could, like, use this boat as decoration. And Steve came up with an idea a while ago, maybe a year or two ago, and we're finally going to do it today. And today is Sunday. It's our last day out here at the lake. Steve got the boat up here on the ATV and with the trailer. And he's just going back down to get the tools and a ladder. And we're going to take this thing up these stairs.
Bond is the name. James Bond. You don't have to take me into the ER. I had my bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll put that in the chart. See anything in front of me. If you can believe it. It's fairly awkward and heavy. <laughs> and these stairs are so slippery. So Steve is drilling a hole That's so, that he, so that he can change and put the rope at the very nose, the bow of the boat. Let's see how that is. Okay. Back to work. We're up to where we're going to put this boat. Steve thought of the idea of anchoring it to this big rock. It's kind of a cool rock. And it's sort of at the halfway point of our trail after the first set of stairs. And then we kind of meander through the forest and then we get to the steep, steep section at the end. Never mind your filming. <laughs> work to be done. Sure, we got this in. I'm a nurse, remember? Grab that in the middle. Should we suspend it? Other way to do it is to suspend it. I don't know. I have to think about this. Yeah, I think suspending it. for my life. Okay, phase one is done. We are gonna just, we just, just put a couple of bolts in it and we'll have to come back up next time we're out and we're gonna kinda do some hemp rope and decorate it a little bit. So that's it for now. Pretty cool, Mel. 
That looks very cool. Glide retrieval. A glide retrieval. Uh, I mean, he sat in there. I'm not going really fast. He sat in there. I will. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, bear. I gave him a big long drink, too. Okay. Look at Riley. <laughs> Riley's going to go in there. Just like that down in Missouri, Riley. How was he? Really good. Well, I had to climb up. He's only 200, me, 200, 200 meters. So. Uh, yeah, I climbed up and I got to him, but he was just barking at a stump. I don't know if there was something underneath the stump or something, but... Hey, right there, come in here. Right here. Right here. Hi, Bear. Hi, 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 Bear. Look at how cute you are. Hi, Clyde. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Is there a key? Oh. oh. A railway key. Sure. What? Oh my god, that's going in my hut. I've just been looking for things. Railway key. That's exactly what that is. An old railway key. I just key. found like a couple, you know, just like a railway Brass. Spike. I saw it right there. It was right there. Perfect. I'm going to hang that in the hut. Hi, Clyde. What? You little silly thing. Yeah, he's pretty far away. But Clyde, you're worth it. I'm you're sure worth it. Yes, Clyde was abducted. This is kind of a funny story. So Steve and I give Clyde a, a hound day. So that means that he has a full collar, like a full charged collar. We have uh, fully charged batteries in the remote control and we pick a nice, a nice day like in terms of weather and we designate a day to let Clyde go out and be a hound dog. And at the end of the day, we plan and prepare for this so that we can go get Clyde. So this particular day was a day that Clyde was allowed to be a hound dog. <coughs> And he was going all along the shore, barking, barking at the rocks, up and around and doing his thing. I decided I was gonna go do some whipper snipping and Steve was inside. Steve was inside watching a movie and just kind of taking a bit of a, a break and having a little snoozeroo. And so I'm up doing the whippering and all of a sudden I run out of gas. I happen to hear a fishing boat and don't think anything of it because there's people that fish in that lake but I just remember hearing a fishing boat close by and anyway I go down to the cabin to get more fuel for the whippersnipper and decide to go see where Clyde's at on the remote control and I come into the cabin and Steve and I look and and it shows that Clyde is in the lake and <laughs> And uh, just like we, we were a little bit disorientated looking at the thing, like where the heck is Clyde? It shows him like going, he's in the lake. So anyway, we pretty much get, get binoculars and look and see that Clyde had gone, Clyde is actually on the other side of the lake. And we look and see there's two people, they have a fishing boat and there's Clyde and they have him on a leash. And we don't have cell service at our cabin. So we have no way to like, communicate to these people who probably are going to be calling us leaving messages because Clyde has a caller with phone numbers on it. So we're like waving like my chainsaw pants and trying to flag down a boat that went by and Steve has some bear banger things like flares that he set off and we're yelling to see if they can hear us across the lake and nothing. One of the things I had thought was I wonder if Clyde had gone into the lake to swim across not swim across the lake, but I wonder if he was swimming in the lake after a deer or something that he was barking at while he was on the rocks. These people happen to be 
going by fishing and they grabbed them and then they took them to the nearest safe community, I guess, if you will. Anyway, we realized that Steve has to go to cell service to find anything out because we don't have cell service and those people across the lake, some people live there full time year round and a, a lot of people do have phones over there. So sure enough, he gets to his messages and it says, we are so excited to let you know that we found your lost dog. <laughs> so they had heard Clyde howling and they knew that there was a missing hound dog in the area over on our side of the lake and they were sure that they found the missing dog. And anyway, just big miscommunication. So Steve was like, oh, thank you so much. That was really, really kind of you, but it's not the right dog. <laughs> and uh, so there they had to bring Clyde back. They had to put their boat back in the water and bring Clyde back over. And we had to chuckle over it because they were like, yeah, he certainly looks like a, a pretty well-fed dog to be, have been out for two weeks. And he had like a poop on their lawn and <laughs> didn't seem to be in any kind of stress. They actually had to like take him down off the mountain because he wouldn't come because he was barking at a tree or something or barking at a rock. Anyway, funny story with a funny ending. And they all are aware now that that is just Clyde that they can hear howling all that way over the lake. So anyway, that is it for this video. And thanks you guys for watching. Which project or which project was your favorite? You guys let me know in the comments and I will see you next week in the next video. Bye.